Okay, so Haley, we will start with you today. Um, please, everybody, make sure in your analysis outline that you are including the speech title there. So she's working on Roosevelt's inaugural address. We'll scroll down to her devices. She has voice as a device. She has repetition as a device. Okay, good. Before I talk about either one of those, I want Haley and everybody to think about some important, vital question. And if you don't have the answer to this question, you cannot proceed to the next step. What is FDR's purpose? What does he want to do with this speech? It helps stop the Great Depression, right? And what does he need in order for that to, to work? Excellent. Haley's got it. FDR wants to unify the American people so they can end the Great Depression. And Haley's got to keep that in her mind the entire time. Because every word, every sentence, every piece of evidence in the speech is all aiming toward that point. And if Haley keeps that in mind, then she's just fine. With my speech, Reagan's Berlin Wall speech, Reagan hopes to do something similar. He wanted to unify Western nations against the Soviets specifically to tear down the Berlin Wall. And if I remember that, then everything else is clear. So let's keep that in mind with Haley. Uh, first one, let's see, voice. Let's skip voice. Let's go to repetition. We must act, and we must act quickly. He has, uh, he repeats basically the same sentence, and Haley has quoted that. Haley's next step is to write a topic sentence. She's going to write a paragraph about repetition. She'll have one paragraph that's only focusing on repetition. She needs a topic sentence. The topic sentence includes three parts. I'll write it, and then I'll tell you what those three parts are. Here's her topic sentence for the paragraph. It's probably her third paragraph because this is her second example. She'll have an intro paragraph in her analysis. She'll have her first rhetorical device paragraph, and then she'll have her second. So this is writing her last paragraph. Roosevelt repeats himself. Emphasize the importance of Americans working together to end the Great Depression. That sentence was constructed by me with three parts. Why don't you make a comment? right here on topic sentence, control alt m comment, make a note on the three parts. Part number one, speaker's name. Notice I started with Roosevelt. Number two, the device. And number three, the purpose. That sentence includes all three of those parts. Speaker's name, device, and purpose. Look at Haley's. Roosevelt's the speaker's name. Repetition is my is my verb. It repeats. So there's the device. The purpose, exactly what Haley talked about, unifying Americans to end the Great Depression. So my topic sentence includes the purpose, the speaker, and the device. It's a fairly clear topic sentence. Here's how the, the paragraph will run. Roosevelt repeats himself to emphasize the importance of Americans working together to end the Great Depression. For example, he states, we must act. 
Now she needs another sentence to follow up. is much better. Okay. Go back and be very careful and step by step about this. First she has a topic sentence. Then she has a transition saying something like for example. Roosevelt does this. Then she explains what that example does. For example, Roosevelt states, we must ask. This simple statement emphasizes that all Americans, because of the we, should act to end the depression, not just the government. Then she'll provide some more transition. Later, Roosevelt again states, we must act quickly. By repeating the same sentence, Roosevelt has emphasized his point that only working together will end this crisis. If Haley had a third example, she could do that as well. But this should be fine. Did you find him repeating himself anywhere else? No? Okay. If you complete the outline, you have a map of each paragraph two substantial paragraphs, and I'll go to my model example in a moment to show you how mine looks. But Haley now has a topic sentence. She has her first example. She has an explanation of that example, her second example, and an explanation of that example. She has at least five sentences, which makes it a substantial paragraph. She might actually include transition material and maybe a conclusion sentence at the end, which would add sentences. She has a decent paragraph, and it reads like this. Roosevelt repeats himself to emphasize the importance of Americans working together to end the Great Depression. For example, he states, we must act. This simple statement emphasizes that all Americans, because of the we, should act to end the, great, to end the Depression, not just the government. Later, he again states, we must act quickly. By repeating the same sentence, Roosevelt has emphasized his point that only working together will end this crisis. That's it. She could tack on a conclusion if she wanted to. The conclusion would basically repeat the main idea of the topic sentence. And then it's done. Look at my example. That was Haley's third paragraph, her last paragraph. Here's mine. Second, I just included some transition language, but I still start with Reagan. Reagan makes his audience feel pride and devotion to the West through repetition of favorable words, especially freedom. Reagan uses the word freedom in connection to the West 17 times. For instance, he states, we welcome change and openness, for we believe that freedom and security go together, and the wall cannot withstand freedom. Sometimes he speaks synonyms to freedom, like liberty and openness in the same way. For instance, Reagan declares, we welcome change and openness. For we believe that freedom and security go together, that the advance of human liberty can only strengthen the cause of world peace. This repetition of inspiring words makes the listener feel pride and belonging in the West. Remember I said my purpose for Reagan was unifying? You unify by feeling pride in group. So that's his purpose. My device, repetition. Remember I said in the topic sentence we need those three ingredients? There's my speaker. There's my purpose. There's my device. And then, 
I give my example. Example, explain. Example, explain. Paragraph done. This type of analytical writing, I, I enjoy teaching because it's so clear. And usually students that can pick up on it enjoy writing it because it is so clear, step by step, okay, do this, 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 this. It's not creative. You don't have to make anything up. All you have to do is construct the sentences and the paragraph according to a formula. The outline is just giving you the formula. Uh, quick question before I go to more student examples. Anybody confused on any of the statements that I just made? Okay. 